Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the Northern Virtual Food and Drink Festival. Uh, I'm going to be here with Luke Reynolds today from Luke's Place, and he's going to be cooking up some smashing dishes for us, some nice Yorkshire lamb. Uh, and then um, we're just going to have a bit of a chat about a few things, see what Luke's up to, where he's been. Please feel free to ask any questions that you want to ask, and I'll put them up there for Luke to answer. Um, and then from there, we'll, we'll just bang on, just get this thing going. Um, so here's a little word from Hospitality Action, who are our main charity today. Please give very, very generously to Hospitality Action as much as you can. A really, really worthwhile charity that are helping us um, as much as they can. Really, really good. So here's a little note from them. Ollie Hoyle, Catering Manager. Peter Molar, Dorman. Ricardo Oliva, Concierge. Ulrich Edwards, Concierge Assistant. We've got you. Linda Anderson, cafe owner. Ioana Georgiou, junior sous chef. Nuno Pinto, bartender. Mark Black, head porter. Andrea Demir, receptionist. We've got you. Aaron Dixon, apprentice chef. Federica Pinna, pastry chef. Sabino Mazzone, pastry chef. Himeri Bochkai, barista supervisor. We've got you. Sean Maharjan, Sushi Head Chef. Mitchell Collier, Duty Manager. Anna Grabczewska, Public Area Cleaner. Whatever you do in hospitality, isn't it good to know that someone's got your back in case anything goes wrong? Hey, so I'd like to welcome live to the studio, guys, Luke Reynolds. Hi, Luke, how are you doing? Uh, good, cheers. Good, well, thank you. Fantastic. So tell us a little about who you are, where you are, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so Luke Reynolds, um, I'm currently in the process of opening my own place um, in Sheffield City Centre. Uh, that'll be called Luke's Place. Um, but yeah, so currently during this pandemic, I'm opening a, opening a restaurant, so... It's all fun. No, 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 no pressure then, really, is it? to try and get somewhere no, else. No, no, no all this. <laughs> Fantastic. So what are you going to be doing for us today? Uh, so today we're going to be doing a cannon of lamb. Uh, we're going to be doing that with a carrot puree, um, a rolled pomana, but I'll go through that, and a pom maxim just to top it off. So nice and classic. Fantastic. So what I'll do is I'll put you centre stage. I'll disappear into the background. But you might hear my voice. Um, from the background and then I'll be asking you questions. Please, anybody out there that's got any questions for Luke, pop them on the screen for me so I can pop them up in front of us. Um, and let's crack on. So let's uh, let's hand over to Luke. So, first of all, I'm gonna get the palm on it. I'm just gonna get that cooking away. Um, I'll go through this in a second. So, what I've got is a rolled palm on it. Uh, doing that with Using Jersey Royals today, they're in season and they taste great. Um, luckily, I got some big ones as well. So I've used them for the Pom Anna and I'm going to do them for the Pom Maxim as well. Um, very, well, very classical uh, is... potato dishes you're doing there. They're not much used in the world nowadays. It's all forms and spoons and yada yada. So Pom Anna and Pom Maxim, fantastic. Well done. Yeah, nice and classic. Um, so what we're doing is actually, for the Pom Anna, using a Japanese peeler. Um, so normally, traditionally, obviously, you'd layer it up, uh, butter between each, each uh, layer and get it in the oven. Uh, today, doing a rolled one. So what I'm doing is using this peeler, and how it works is put your potato in. And what you end up with is a strip of potato, and you end up with a big length of that. You roll it up. I've got duck fat uh, that I brushed it with. I uh, put time um, all the way along it. What I've done is roll that up and then that's just placed in a pan with um, butter and duck fat. I'm just going to slowly cook that so it soaks up that really nice rich duck fat and butter. So with that nice gadget there you're bringing a real modern twist to a real classic? Yeah so yeah straight away I mean it's a classic dish but it's just done a little bit differently using like modern bit of equipment. Um, Saw so Daniel Clifford use it a while back on Great British Menu, and I think everyone's sort of starting to know them now and use them. But yeah, it's a bit of a modern way of, modern way of doing it. Fantastic, well done. 
Um, yeah, so I've done the, done the, already done the count cure. I did this earlier on. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just tell you how I've done it. I've done it a little bit differently to a normal one. So just use standard carrot. And what I've done is chop that up, put it into a pan. I've used 500 ml of um, chicken stock. I've put that into the pan with the carrots. That's going with star anise. And then what I've put in is a little bit of toasted yeast flakes. And that just adds another depth to the, the puree. So it's like, um, it's like a rich, nutty, uh, cheesy flavour that adds to it, but like a umami kind of flavour. So yeah, I was just about to say that. That's kind of the, 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 the Heston thing a while ago was bringing umami into it, which is one of the, the sixth sense, I think, wasn't it? So that kind of really added a real depth and richness to that carrot puree, won't it? Yeah, that's it. It just lifts it a bit. You know, it's just um, a different element to it and just changes it a lot. You know, it really makes it really rich. <laughs> So yeah, that's all I've done really, is cut that into a pan, um, wait till the carrot absorbs all that stock. Uh, so it all pretty much cooks down and then when it's when the carrot's nice and soft and all stock's pretty much gone, just get that into a blitzer and blitz it with butter and then get it nice and smooth, pass it off and then just add a little bit of salt after just to season it, um, just give that to taste and yeah, that ends up with the, the nice carrot puree. Nice, nice colour as well. Um, yeah, so I've done that. Um, next one was the Pond Maxim. Uh, I've used the Jersey Royals again for that. Uh, banging season, and they're just great. So just use them as much as I can. Um, obviously, Pond Maxim normally thin slice it. So get them so your potato is nice and uh, wafer thin. Get it onto a baking baking sheet and layer that up. So you want them so nicely thinly sliced. Cut them to the correct shape and then just lay them so just just overlapping. And what you'll end up with is once they're baked, there's a nice little disc. And as a finishing touch, you've just add a little bit of beetroot powder to the top of them. Looks like a poppy. You could do that for a uh, poppy day, couldn't you? Yeah, nice, nice and pretty, you know. So, yeah, just there. Uh, so, I've done that. I've already pre done them. Um, just because all that does is just add a little bit of element. So for the pom on it, it's going to be nice and soft. It's not going to be crispy. It's cooked in the fat and the butter. It's just going to absorb all that. It's just going to be nice and rich, but soft. So the pom maxing just adds a little bit of a texture element to it. Um, they've been in duck fat as well, so they're nice and crispy. Got loads of flavour. I just finished with beetroot powder, so just for that extra little bit. So the lamp, I've got a nice can of lamp. Uh, Already pre-rolled, already done that all last night. Draw a little bit of smoked uh, rapeseed oil and thyme, and that's just rolled nice and tight and left overnight just so it firms up, gets a nice, uh, nice shape to it for cooking. For the jus, I'm using Essential Cuisine. Already uh, jus straight out the tin, so uh, thank you to them. It's going that way now, though, isn't it? I mean, back in the day when I learned to cook, it was all about stocks and, and base sauces and this, that, and the blah, blah. But these guys, Essential Cuisine, and there's other ones out there, True Food Stocks and all that kind of yeah. stuff, are really, really putting some banging products out there to help us as much as they can to reduce our time in the kitchen, I think, really, isn't it? And making our lives as easy as possible. That's it. I mean, it's good product. So, you know, it saves a lot of time, a lot of uh, hassle. Also, saves you messing about with the HO. You know, there's a lot of things with roasting bones off and getting them in stock for over a period of time. Um, so if, when you get a product that tastes good and it's straight, you know, they have a good recipe and it works really well, you know, it makes sense to sort of use that. You know, it saves a lot of time and hassle in the kitchen. So, yeah, definitely, um, it's definitely good using using a product like that. Fantastic. Your Yorkshire rapeseed oil just joining us again, saying great flavors you got <laughs> going on in the dish there, Luke. That's it. It's good. It's a good product. Um, yeah, so we've got Margella O'Connell as well saying hello, Luke. So uh, we've got lots of support for you out there. That's good. That is good. So yeah, for the juice, so I'm just going to warm the juice. It's already pre-done, straight out, straight from Central Cuisine. So don't need to do anything to that. All I've got to do is just warm it up. Consistency, everything's already done. So that's just going to bring that up to temperature in a bit. Uh, for the juice, what I've got is diced carrot. I don't know if you can see that. So I've got diced carrot, I've got diced beetroot, diced courgette, and some capers. So once Good skills there, Chef. That looks like nice brunoise. That's it. I've been practising. <laughs> um, yeah, so once the jus is nice and warm, uh, we're just going to put the jus into that. That's just going to run through it right at the end. 
it's not going to cook. It's just going to add a little bit of textural element to the jus, a little bit of something to the dish, and yeah, just a little bit of flavour. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to do that right at the end, nice and quick. So that plumana isn't going to take long. So because it's in thin strips, it's just rolled. It doesn't doesn't take that long to absorb all that fat, that butteriness. So it won't take that long to cook. So while we're doing that, we're going to warm the, warm the jus up. We're going to warm the puree up, and then we're going to get cooking the lamb. To finish the lamb off at the end, we've got a little bit of black garlic, and all I've done to that is add a little bit of olive oil. And that just adds like a sweet balsamic taste to the lamb. Um, so once it's once it comes out of the pan with all that rich butter, it's going to roll it quickly into the black black garlic. And then straight from the black garlic, I've got some herbs that I toasted off earlier. So I've got mustard seeds, coriander seeds, fennel seeds, and a little pinch of cumin. Um, and we're just going to roll that lamb into that after and let the lid rest. So we've got lots of love on the uh, on the Facebook for you here, Luke. I'll put a couple of your guys' comments up there. So um, someone's going to come and dine at your restaurant when it's open. Josh Rooney Hilton's going to be coming to dine when you're open. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Looking and he also says, it. sounds nice, Luke. Smashing it. Can't wait to come and dine. That's good. Thank you very much. Yorkshire rapeseed oil, our smoked oil strikes again. It's a great product. Yeah, smashing product. Absolutely amazing. Um, and have you, not, have you noticed out there, Luke, some of these kind of smaller producers coming through now and um, with just these are really amazing artisan products that we don't need to do anything to to make any better because they just yeah. stand alone, amazing products. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you, you don't need to do anything. With people like that coming through, it definitely makes our lives a lot easier in the kitchen. You know, you don't have to spend your time um, making your own or... Trying to, trying to improve your own, you know, you can just, the perfect recipes that taste that, you know, absolutely amazing. That smoked one's just fantastic, you know. So we got a question here for you as well from Peter Callahan. Is this the kind of dish we can expect at Luke's Place? Yeah, so this is a dish that I created for Luke's Place. Um, I'm just going to plate it up a little bit traditionally today. Uh, very classic, paying homage to, to this man. Um, but who, yeah, who's that man? Tell, tell us who that man is. Or Marco. <laughs> um, yeah, so this this will be a dish. It's a, so at least basically going to be um, tasting menu, um, and this will be the meat dish uh, when hopefully when they open. So, yeah. Excellent. So Yorkshire rapeseed has come through saying. Um, that Stall Smokehouse is who smokes their oil for him. So that's a lovely collaboration between two small businesses to make an absolutely fantastic product. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, it's really good. You know, like, like I say, it uh, makes our lives a lot easier in the kitchen when you can just buy a product that, you know, tastes that great. Margella O'Connell's got a bit of beard envy going on there. She says epic beard. <laughs> well, I might not win best dish, but I can win best beard today. <laughs> So he's got an answer there from Peter Callahan saying, nice. I'm sure he's, Peter's going to look forward to coming and dining with you as well at Luke's Place when you eventually open. No, that'd be good. So what we're going to do, we're just going to get that lamb cooking. So the thing with the cannon, there's, not that, there's no fat on it, so you've just got to be really careful about it overcooking. You've got nothing to protect it while it's in the pan. So you've just got to be really careful, really gentle with it. So if any of you guys out there in Facebook land have got a question for Luke, please feel free to get on your keyboards or on your uh, on your screen and tap that one in there. So the lamb, Luke, where's the lamb from? Um, yeah, so it's just across the road, actually. It's uh, okay. not travelled far at all. The sheep are just at the back. Fantastic. Are you going to be using that when you get to Luke's place also? Yeah, definitely. That's what, that's what I want. Um, I want to be using as much local produce as I, as I possibly can. And especially in Sheffield, you know, Yorkshire, got fantastic fields, farms. You know, as you can see today with like Yorkshire rapeseed oil, there's plenty of, uh, there's some great businesses and food around there. So I'm trying to use as much of that as I can. Excellent. So, yeah, so I'm just going to get that. Warm that pan up. I'm just going to get that searing away. 
one has got a little bit of colour on it, we're going to add a bit of butter to that, a little bit of thyme, we're just going to baste that and then let it rest. Like you said before, that resting part of it is really important. Yeah, it is massive. I mean, I, th I don't think people appreciate that very much, that um, what goes into actually putting food on somebody's plate is far more technical than, than cooking it, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. That's it. Um, you know, it's, it's not just a case of putting it in the pan and leaving it. You know, you've just got to, especially this, you've got to really keep an eye on it. You don't want it to overcook, otherwise it's just going to go all firm and, you know, chewy. You know, you don't want that. Yeah, so at this time, so we've got the pomander the cooking away. We've got that in that duck fat and the butter, like clarified butter and duck fat. So that's just cooking away nicely in there. We've got the juice just warming up, and then we've got the lamb cooking away. So we're going to get a little bit of colour onto that lamb, and we're going to start adding butter, thyme, and get some flavour into it. Yeah, Josh has just mentioned something really good. I'll pop it up. It might be quite big, but I'll pop it up on the screen anyway. And there we go. So we're, we're looking for a bit of crowdfunding as well to help you get this place off the ground, yeah? Yeah, so I've got crowdfunding up and running. Um, it's uh, just looking to help. So I bought the place, uh, doing it on pretty limited money, not taking any loans out, not doing anything. It's just it's my own money. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking for a bit of a crowd crowdfunding, really, to uh, get the equipment and all the little bits with the restaurant. There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot of little bits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a lot more than you'll think, a lot more than you realise as well. So, uh, yeah, you guys get behind Luke out there as well. Let's get this another fantastic business up and running. So the, the link's on the page there. Thank you very much, Josh, for, for putting that one up there for us. Um, and I'm sure that you'll, after this, put a link on your Facebook page as well, Josh, and on your Insta and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's get Luke's place up and running, yeah? Yeah, let's do it. So I've got a little bit of colour. I'm starting to get that little bit of colour on the... Uh... On the cannon now. So I thought I'd just to start adding butter to it. You don't want it at a high temperature, like I said, so there's no fat, you haven't got any. You want to be really careful about not overcooking the cannon. Um, so adding butter to it, just keep it on the lower heat, baste it. Yeah, with the can of lamb being a very, very lean piece of meat um, with no fat in there to help render out of it or it's got no protection of its own really hasn't it so you've got to be its protection in a way by keeping your eye on it and cooking it perfectly yeah that's it that's it you can't really take your eye off it you've just got to be really really careful really careful about it. but low heat low heat once it's got a bit of crawler on get that get that butter in the pan i'm just going to leave that for a little bit got some time with that once that comes out, like I say, it's going into the black garlic um, and then into the toasted um, herbs and seeds that I did before. So we'll check that for a minute. So what are you cooking the pomana in there in that pan? What you got going on in the background there, Luke? Yeah, so we've got clarified butter and duck fat and like I said so you roll it roll it and then like I said traditionally normally a pom on it is layers of potato with butter and then baked whereas this is rolled with duck fat uh, thyme so it sticks to it a um, little bit of seasoning and yeah then it's cooked in butter and duck fat again and then you end up with this nice crispy little roll of buttered fatty potato L loveliness that looks lush that really does yeah it's just the way you said before it's just a modern way of sort of a, a classic you know classic potato dish yeah and if we don't reinvent and keep these classics going then they'll eventually die out won't they but they are the base of most cookery that's it i mean you know it's uh not reinventing the wheel but it's just a different it's just a different take on it you know it's the exact same dish it's just uh a little bit of a modern twist using the modern bit of kit. So I'm just going to keep basting that one. So if any of you guys out there have got any more questions for Luke, please feel free to, to join in with us here and I'll pop them up on the screen for you. Um, Luke's doing a fantastic job here. 
uh, in his kitchen at home. I'm sure your kitchen at Luke's place will be much bigger, will it? So you've got more equipment to go with and stuff. Yeah. Oh. We're going to gently start heating our puree now. That lamb won't take that long to, uh, to cook from here, we need that resting time. So start warming the puree in as you up. A little bit, a little bit of lamb that big. It's not going to take that long to do. You know, four minutes or so, and it's it should be about there, four or five minutes. So we got Peter right. Callahan there saying, "Can you put those pom on it as a reward on the crowdfunder, please?" <laughs> That might be one of them. I might have to add that to it. That'd be good, that. Yeah, you're getting a lot of love for it, so. Yeah, it's actually a thing I've been wanting to do for ages, and I've been waiting for that Japanese peeler to come for about three or four months. So I've been wanting to do this dish for a long time. And they're a great bit of kit as well. You can cut you can cut lasagna sheets out of pretty much any vegetable that you can get on the spike really, can't you? That's it. That is it. Um, I did, like, an uh, apple the day and made it into like an apple crumble just in the same way roll it and then caramelize it in some caramel you know and do it as a crumble just a different way of, of doing it nice idea yeah lovely so we've got that pomona cooking now we've got that lamb yeah take that lamb roll it in that black garlic and olive oil And what we're going to do from that, we're going to get the lamb, we're just going to roll it in those herbs that I did before. So we've got mustard seeds, coriander seeds, a little bit of fennel and just a touch of cumin. With lamb as well, you can pack so much into it, you know, it can take so much flavour. So once we've done that, we're just going to pop it to the side, we're just going to leave that to rest. So pretty much from now on, it's just a case of plating really. So I'll go through everything again. We've got classic plate to plate up with. So we've got that pom on there that we're just leaving. That's all nicely cooked now. That's perfect. We've got a lamb that's just waiting. That's been pan fried, a little bit of butter, um, a little bit of thyme, and then rolled, rolled in those herbs and spices from before, and a little bit of black garlic. Just going to leave that to rest. Uh, we've got the carrot puree, which, like I said before, is done with the yeast flakes, which are just absolutely incredible. I can't recommend them enough. They're easy to get hold of. Um, just add an incredible depth of flavour to the dish. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, so a little bit of anise in with that and the chicken stock. That's your carrot puree. Pom maxim, nice and simple. Sliced potato, cut it to the size you want. In the oven, add my gas mark for about 30 minutes. And it's absolutely fine. So what have we got planned after this demonstration then, Luke? Are we going to be doing more planning for the new restaurant? Uh, I've got a big, big push next week. Uh, I've got new floor coming in. I've got walls are getting done. Um, I've got a rationale and a stove coming. Uh, so I'll get fitted in once the floor's done. So I've got a big push next week as of tomorrow. Fantastic. So, yeah, keep, keep me nice and busy. So that stock is nicely, nice and warmed up now. We don't have to reduce it too much. Like I said, essential cuisine. We've already got 
really nice recipe, really nice shoe. So I'm just going to add that to that little bit of diced vegetables from before. Going to get that one. A plate of the pomander. So on top of that pomander, we're going to get the pom maxim, which just finished off with that little bit of beetroot powder, which just makes it pop a little bit. I said, keeping this nice and classic. So is that lamb cooked how you want it? Sorry, that sounds a bit Great British menu, that doesn't it? Perfect. Just, just pink, just pink in the middle. Lovely. So yeah, just gonna plate that up. Then we get the puree. Like I say, if you can, if you can make this puree, I'll put the when we gather all our recipes together. I'll obviously put this up, but. It's definitely one to try out this whole dish. Yeah, that puree looks banging. It looks really nice, really smooth, vibrant in colour as well. And I can imagine the flavours that are going on through there with what you put in it as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, beautiful. That toasted yeast just makes such a difference to it. Just really yeah, elevates it. So, yeah, so then we've got the juice. So, but juice with all those little diced vegetables. Like I said, we've got carrot, courgette, beetroot and capers. And they're not cooked. They're just, just adds a little bit of texture. A little bit of colour. It's a nice and simple dish, you know. It really is simple. A little bit of prep, but apart from that, it's a uh, it's nice and easy, really. So, uh, Yorkshire rapeseed oil in that lamb looks perfect. You know, we've got Michael Wilkinson coming in there saying that Pom Maxim is a thing of beauty, chef. <laughs> Thank you. So I'll just uh, I'll show you this up nice and close. Also have to make a uh, makeshift makeshift stand for my camera out of uh, out of my charger and some <laughs> sellotape. So well, yeah, chefs are very inventive though, at the end of the day, aren't we? So. Yeah, that's it. So that's the finished product. So talk us through it then, Luke. What's that? Did what's we got in front of us there? What we're we looking at? Yeah, so we've got the We've got the pom under on top of that we've got that pom maxim then we've got the cannon of lamb rolled in all those spices with the jus and vegetables on top of that with the carrot puree to finish um nice and simple nice and classic looking um yeah you don't really need much else doing to it fantastic that was absolutely banging yeah nice and classic so do you want to give a last shout out to luke's place and tell everybody where they're eventually going to be able to find you and uh how to get your crowdfunding thing. I'll just bang this back up on the screen as well so everyone can see that. Yeah, so we've got Restaurant Luke's Place. You can find that on Instagram. Um, on there is a link to the crowdfunding site, so you can check that out. On there, there's plenty of plenty of things to get for yourself. Um, I've got nights with James Cochran, Adam Reed, Simon Wood, so um, it's limited tickets for them, so you can grab yourself a ticket for that on there. Uh, also, on the past clothing, so I've got clothing for chefs you can go and check that out on instagram um and there's a link to the website on there so feel free to go and check that out during these times get yourself some nice fresh fresh clothing <laughs> fantastic well done that's brilliant so on behalf of all of us here at um the northern virtual food and drink festival i'd like to thank you very much luke for that demonstration it's absolutely amazing thank you. so uh, we'll see you again thank soon you. and we'll definitely we'll see you at luke's place yeah it's been a great day thank you so thanks for that, Luke. That was absolutely amazing. Really, really good. So we're just going to finish off this now with a little bit more from Hospitality Action uh, and just what you can do to help us guys behind the scenes and in the kitchens and all your servers and so on and so forth. So another word from our main charity, Hospitality Action. Ollie Hoyle, Catering Manager. Peter Moller, Dorman. Ricardo Oliva, Concierge. Ulrich Edwards, Concierge Assistant. We've got you. Linda Anderson, cafe owner. Ioana Georgiou, junior sous chef. Nuno Pinto, bartender. 
Mark Black, head porter. Andrea Demir, receptionist. We've got you. Aaron Dixon, apprentice chef. Federica Pinna, pastry chef. Sabino Mazzone, pastry chef. Himeri Bochke, barista supervisor. We've got you. Sean Maharjan, sushi head chef. Mitchell Collier, duty manager. Anna Grabczewska, public area cleaner. Whatever you do in hospitality, isn't it good to know that someone's got your back in case anything goes wrong? The Northern Food and Drink Virtual Festival. Working with... We will be joined by some of the top chefs around the Northern region and some industry professionals doing masterclasses and demos on the 24th and 25th of May. Event Organisation Team We're also supporting Hospitality Action and supporting them in the work they do. Hospitality Action is a force for good. We offer lifelines to people who work or have worked in hospitality and find themselves in difficulty or crisis. We help people set their lives back on track. But not all of our stories have happy endings. For April, a secondary cancer diagnosis meant the best we could do for her was to take any financial worries off her mind. I was diagnosed summer of 2018 with sarcoma cancer and attended uh, Christie Hospital here in Manchester and from there I've been on a journey with various chemo treatments and an operation. Oh, I've known about hospitality actually for over 10 years. They've been very, very good to me. They have um, given me little Christmas presents. Uh, I came back on my holiday and I had a birthday present from them and a birthday card, which really surprised me. It was a nice little touch. Uh, I've been given a warming grant for heating and, and I've been given 
different amounts of money at uh, different times throughout the year. With VHA's help, I've been able to recently take a little trip down to London uh, a couple of weeks ago. And with that, I was able to sort of meet up with my friends, go out. We went to the West End, we went and seen the Tina Turner musical. And we had fun, you know, it doesn't take that much sort of to be with your friends and sort of having that sort of tranquility and fun. It's less pressure um, to, it's knowing that um, next month there'll be a song coming in there too, and that'll pay off all the utility bills. So uh, it's, it's a safety net that's there and I'm very, very grateful that it's there that I'm able to use it. Whatever life throws at you, isn't it great to know somebody's got your back when the going gets tough? Help us to help people like April, people like you. Hospitality Action, we've got you.